Well, good morning. Welcome to Central Church. Uh, we are a Jesus church uh, where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, where everyone is loved, and of course, where anything is possible. Thank you for joining us. Always fun to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Um, I have some announcements for Central Church. Um, in-person services, as I told you last week, will resume next week, March 21st at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're allowed 30% of capacity, so we're trying not to go over a 100 people uh, in church, but uh, welcome. Love to see you. All the protocols will be in place. It is also Communion Sunday, so what a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to start the in-person services uh, in that way again. So just a reminder how we do communion. We've bought those little communion cups that have the wafer in them and, and the juice, so you will come in, pick up your little cup, and you will We'll take it back home again. So we're not going to touch it. It'll all be perfectly uh, sealed. Uh, so you will be you will be fine and taken care of. All the other protocols will be in place. There will be things for the children to do. I think Carrie sent some information to the parents for them to just pre-register so that she has enough uh, of the bags uh, available for the kids with their own bags in their in their own names as well. And of course, goes without saying, we are continuing the online services. That's not going to change. It It'll be there uh, until everyone feels that they are okay to come back to church, and it will continue uh, after that uh, as well. I have some information from Christine for the senior youth. Senior youth continues to meet uh, on Saturdays from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. via Zoom, and then Sunday from 2.30 till 4 o'clock in the afternoon for outdoor activities. The monthly calendar and Zoom link are posted in the youth chat as well as on their Instagram page uh, and it'll come on the screen right there behind me. It's at Central Senior Youth. The calendar is also posted on their web on our website. Uh, during this week's Zoom meeting, they will be finishing the, the program that they've been doing, God's Not Dead. Uh, so bring your popcorn, uh, youth, uh, for ending uh, that program. We continue to pray uh, for folks who are going through difficult times, uh, folks who are struggling with their health, folks who, are, folks who are just struggling with the time that we're going through, but also rejoicing with folks who are celebrating good things and new things. Um, we pray for you at the prayer meetings. Uh, here, I'm not going to pray by name, as always, as I say, because we're keeping your privacy uh, in mind for that as well. But let's bow our heads together. Father God... Thank you again for this time together. Thank you that despite COVID, we could continue worshiping you and, and serving you and belonging to you and, and being part of your body uh, in this world. Uh, we're not bound by walls and windows and all these things. Uh, thank you, gracious Lord, that we can do that. Thank you again for this morning where we have time uh, to be around your word and listen for your word as you speak into our lives. And we pray that our hearts and lives will be open to, to the, the, the touching of your Holy Spirit, through the whisper of your Holy Spirit, through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, thank you. You're such an amazing Lord in our lives uh, that you just walk with us, hold us, are gracious towards us. And this morning, we lift up your glorious name. Uh, in your wonderful name we pray. Amen. So second part of the two-part series on God doing a beautiful thing uh, in the desert. Now, it's interesting that the, uh, the desert is a little bit of a paradox, right? Um, at first sight, it's, it's this dry and hot and dead, inhospitable place. And, and the next thing, you stumble upon an oasis, and, and, and there's life, uh, and there's abundance, now, it's interesting, I don't know if you've noticed that, the important role that the desert, the wilderness, plays in the lives of God's people throughout Scripture. Uh, let me give you a few examples of that. Before Moses could, could lead God's people, 
uh, to the promised land. Moses had to spend some time in the wilderness in preparation. Before the people of Israel could, could inherit the promised land, they spent 40 years in the desert being taught by God, being, being taken care of by God, getting to know God, getting to see God do the impossible. Uh, Hosea speaks of, of the time in the desert as the time of God's courtship. Uh, when, when the people in his time turn away from God, he says, God's going to take them and he's going to take them back to the desert and there God will woo them again. See, this is a time of courtship. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 to 22, tells us that um, after his conversion, before he started working, he went into the desert for three years. Just last week, we, we saw Jesus being taken into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights before he started his ministry. So it's interesting when you see the Bible, when it looks at the desert, the desert is seen as this place of, of, new, of new things, of new possibilities, where things are, are being made new. And that's what I want to talk with you about, because one of the, the well-known New Testament uh, scholars, N.T. Wright, says, this COVID time has been like a time of, of the wilderness, the desert uh, for people. So let's talk about God saying, but the wilderness is a place of new possibilities, even when we are going through our own desert times. And to help us with that, I'm going to take you to a beautiful passage in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, only two verses. So the Lord says, forget, or some of the old translations say, remember not the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. And now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What a, what a beautiful promise from God to, to his people, to each one of us, when we, when we end up in our own desert moments. But I want you to notice in this passage three invitations from God. And the first invitation comes in verse 19, when the Lord says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. That, that word, behold, um, some translations translate it with, with look or see. Um, the word behold in, in the Hebrew is the word chen. Uh, and it's not the regular word that it's used for look or see. The regular word is hine. But the word chen means... Um, to pay close attention. Pay close attention because something exciting, something new, something breathtaking is going to happen. Uh, let me give you an example to explain this. The, the Greek counterpart of the word uh, chen is the word idu in Greek, which also means pay close attention. And, and the best example of saying pay close attention because something good is going to happen, we find in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 10. When the angel appears to, to the shepherds, the angel says, Behold, and, and I'm so sad, the NIV has translated that out, but it says that in the Greek. Behold! I bring good news of great joy for everyone because Christ is going to be born. Do you see that? Behold, says God. And when God says behold, God says, look, look, look carefully. There's something exciting, new, breathtaking on the way. But then as, as I was thinking about uh, behold, looking, um, paying attention, I, I thought to myself, yeah, there's different ways in, in, in which we in which we look in which we pay attention. I think the first way in which we in which we look is with our our physical eyes. And when I'm in the desert and I look with my physical eyes, all I see dry, parched land, inhospitable, uh, in, uninhabitable. It's just desert. And I don't know that it's going to end. And I don't know that I'm going to make it through it because that's what my physical eyes see. And I can be trapped by that. 
I can also look with my, with my mental eyes. And boy, has that been something that's got hold of so many of us in, in this desert time of COVID, where your mind and it just plays the most amazing games with you and plays all kinds of tricks on you and makes you think of things that you never would have thought of even. It's kind of like being in the desert and you're seeing a mirage and it plays games with you because you set off towards the mirage, but you can't get it because it's a mirage. You get there and it's desert because I looked with those eyes of my mind and sometimes, boy, they play hard games. But there's a, there's a third way of looking and, and, and I struggle with, with giving it a proper name. So forgive me if my, the name that I gave it is not that great. I, I think the way that God is talking about when he says, behold, is God says, look with the eyes of your heart. That which, which will touch faith, which will touch confidence so that, so that you can look with in the desert. In the wilderness, so that you can look with expectation, with, with openness, with hope. Because here's the thing that we know. When God says, behold, God's behold is always followed by an action. In Luke, behold, I bring good news, and the child is born. Here in Isaiah, behold, I am going to do a new thing. And then he talks about rivers and, and, and paths, and, and we'll get there in a second. When God speaks of behold, it's not just, let's do a little window shopping, but you're not allowed to get the stuff that's in there. Or there's your gifts, but you can only have a look at them and then get, get, get on with that. When God says behold, God says it will be followed by an action. You can trust me. You can be excited because Something exciting, bold, new is on the way. And that kind of segues into that second invitation. Verse 19. Behold, I am, and here's the second thing, doing a new thing. Do you not perceive that? This invitation to, to see what God is going to do in the desert, in our wilderness moments. Now, now let me give you a little uh, historical context to, to what's going on here and why God is saying this. So the people of Israel right now have been taken into Babylonian exile. So, so everything they knew was devastated. Their city, their temple, they, they were displaced. They're in a new place that they don't know. There's, there's things that they've never seen, that they've never experienced, and, and they feel, they feel lost, and they feel that God has abandoned them, and that they're on their own. And this is when Isaiah comes to them, and the Lord speaks to Isaiah, and Isaiah says, stop looking at everything with the wrong eyes. Stop just seeing the desert. Stop just seeing the, the struggles. Stop just seeing the exile. Here's God's word to you. God says, I'm going to do a new thing. And the moment you start looking with new eyes, even in your desert, not just these eyes, I see the desert, not just the mind games. When you allow God to speak and all of a sudden you see new things, new opportunities, new gifts, even in the desert time. Can we hear this, my friends? I know, and I've said this a million times lately. I, I, I know these are times that, that are devastating. Everything has changed. The way in which we do things, the way in which we worship. I mean, I've been here with Elry alone in this church for how many weeks again? The, the, the way in, in, in which we work, we sit at home, the way in which we go to school, the way in which we communicate together as families, we can't even get together but but hear this god says 
Look again, and you will see that I haven't abandoned you. But actually, if you look closely, I have been doing new things. If only we are prepared to look with new eyes. Because here's the thing. To enter into that amazing mystery of the wilderness becoming a place of possibility, I need to look, I need to look with, with faith and with confidence, knowing that nothing is impossible for God. Oh, I'm as old as anything you're telling me I'm going to have a child. Imp Nothing is impossible for God. You mean to say I'm going to be the mother of the ch child of God? Nothing is impossible for God. Y you mean that, Elizabeth? Nothing is impossible for God. We need to accept that even in the wilderness, the things that God is planning for us far outweighs the things that in the wilderness are difficult. For the only way in which we'll get past the pain and past the struggles is when we start seeing the new possibilities and the new things that God is placing before us and doing a new thing. Before they could see this, God was already preparing that there would be a Persian king called Cyrus. And this Persian king Cyrus' heart would change and he would send Zerubbabel to go back and rebuild the temple. And Ezra the scribe would go with, with God's people. God was already preparing that there would be a king Artaxerxes and God would be working in Artaxerxes' heart so that he would send Nehemiah back to go rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. God was already doing a new thing while they were saying we're sitting in, in, in exile in, in our own desert. Look with new eyes. And see the possibilities of what God is doing in the desert. What is God doing in your wilderness time? Have you decided to look with different eyes? Third invitation. Verse 18. God says, forget. Remember not, says the old um, uh, translation. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Let me give you the context of this again. They were sitting in exile. And they were longing for the good old days. When we were back in Israel. And we were back in Jerusalem. And the temple and the walls. And they forget their memory is so short. That there was nothing left of that. That God had already left that temple. Because they were not serving God in that temple. That that that. Jerusalem was an, was an empty place because God was not amongst what they were doing. That's why they went into exile. That short memory, just that selective memory. Oh, the walls and the temple. No, but where was God? What was the new thing God was planning? Forget the old things, says God. Let go of the past. Forget the good old days. There's something new. And I'm planning something new. What are the things that are, that are preventing us from experiencing those new things that God is preparing for us, my friend? What is preventing you from experiencing the gifts that God has waiting for you? I don't know. You will know. It might be the way that you think of God. How small we see God. Or how maybe we want to manipulate God and he's not being manipulated and he's not doing what I want him to do and how I think of God and then I make God smaller again. It might be the way I think of living and, and how I would like to live and, and, and the circumstances. And, and I'm stuck in the old circumstances and, and I can't see the new things that God is doing. Perhaps it's just me and the way that I, that I live my life. That's preventing me. What is holding you back to experience those amazing, wonderful gifts that God has in store for you? 
Let me read this passage for you again, and we'll end with that. I'm going to read you how Eugene Peterson translated this in the message. Forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I am making a road through the wilderness. Rivers in the desert. Just think about it. I'm making a road in the wilderness. You're going to get through it. That's why I'm building the road. You just don't see it yet. I am making rivers in the, in the desert. The impossible is becoming possible. If only you'll see with the right eye. Forget the old things and forget what has happened. Forget those old things and see the new things that God is doing in your life. Imagine the possibilities when we start looking at our desert and our wilderness times with new eyes. Behold, I'm doing a new thing says the Lord. Amen. Oh, Father God, thank you uh, that sometimes you take us in the wilderness. Not because you want us to struggle, because there in the wilderness you do something new. The wonderful new possibilities. You teach us that there's water that comes from a rock. There's manna and quail that will come Whenever it is needed. The clothes, they won't wear out. And the shoes, they won't wear out. You teach us that there, there is a cloud and there is a, a fireball that will be us in day and in the night. And you will provide. And sometimes you take us into the desert. Because you're courting us all over again. And we learn to fall in love with you as of old. Because we learn to trust you. For in the wilderness, you can make a way. In the wilderness, you can make rivers. Thank you. Thank you that we can see the new things that you are doing also in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That was always wonderful uh, to share this time with you. Uh, by the way, if you drive past the church, uh, exciting things going on. The scaffolding's going up. So the, the work's going to start one of these days on the roof. And, and how amazing uh, is that? So we're really excited about that too. So maybe you can drive past and, and you will see that. Uh, remember again, just a reminder, next Sunday, uh, Communion Sunday. So as you go into the week, remember that the Lord sends you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the amazing closeness and comfort and surprises of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.